What's up, everybody? It's a new week. Monday morning, we're here, and I've got a new friend, and he's a total rock star. I'm going to introduce to you today the man with the coolest spelling of Michael in the history of the world from out at FIU Online. Put your hands together for my friend Michael. Michael, what's up, buddy? Welcome. I'm well. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, uh, just I, I guess a little introduction of, of who I am. Um, thank you for spending some time with me today. We're going to talk about creating incredible videos. Uh, like Mark said, my name is Michael Allendi. I am the Learning Design Innovation Manager here at FIU Online. I am also a faculty in our Honors College teaching in-person, online, hybrid, hybrid flex, uh, remote, onomatopoeia, I mean, whatever it is that we're trying to do to, to figure out to get this thing off going. Um, I'm teaching in all those modalities. Uh, so I want to bring that, uh, that, that knowledge, that experience to you all. Uh, and to be completely transparent as well, uh, a lot of this presentation I'd shared previously in a webinar series we called Click 12 for K-12 faculty. Um, and in an effort to ensure that what I'm sharing with you all isn't just stuff that's worked or relevant to higher ed, it's also relevant to those of you maybe corporate or even K-12, uh, I had a consultant join uh, my team to collaborate and create this presentation. Uh, it's my most favorite consultant. Uh, her name is Amanda. She is my wife. Um, and she is an elementary uh, school teacher. Uh, you'll see her in some of the video samples uh, that I show a little bit later. Um, what I want to let you all know um, is, you know, prepping for this conversation about creating incredible videos, there's a real, a huge obstacle that we all have to kind of overcome before we can really start that conversation. And and when I was thinking, man, how do I how do I get people to open up or feel more confident about that particular obstacle, I thought, man, is there a video out there that I think will help people realize what they're capable of doing um, and, and the power of video? I mean, something that was deep, something that was inspirational. And I think this next video, it does just that. So sit back and enjoy. I have a pen. I have an apple, uh, apple pen. I have a pen. I have pineapple, uh, pineapple pen. Apple pen, pineapple pen, uh, pen pineapple apple pen. Pen pineapple apple pen. That's time. Now, I know some of you are like, wait, wait, this guy said he was where at a university? What in the world was it that he just made us watch? Um, and, you know, I, I, there's a reason why I wanted you all to watch that. And I think that explanation is best embodied by these three numbers. And the first number is 342,184,697. The second number is the number one. And the third number is 45. That first number is how many views that video had as of two months ago. The second number is where it ended at the billboard charts in Japan. And that last number is how long this video was. I think many times some of us feel like, you know, I can't make a video. Uh, the content that I'm talking about isn't interesting. I'm not that engaging. My clothes are, I, I, I cannot create a video that people are going to want to watch. But after watching that video, I think we can all agree that what people might be engaged in, what quality, what, what, what reservations you might've had is something that you can create a better video than pen, pineapple, apple, pen, whatever. You can do this, look at these numbers, just 45 seconds long, you can create incredible things. And the reason that you can do this, especially using video, is because fundamentally, humans crave connection and in any format. We know this as educators, we know this as, as learners, and I think we know that that connection can come in video, but it doesn't look like this, 
right? How many of us have been on Zoom calls where the person's like webcam is like up their nose or, you know, you're just seeing their forehead, right? We know that there's something missing there, especially during this pandemic with the way we do video. So let's talk about how we're going to tackle uh, this particular topic, how we're going to outline how to create incredible videos today. Um, today, we're going we're gonna to discuss why video, right? Why is this even a conversation? Uh, next, we'll talk about some best practices, probably the most important best practice, and it'll be weaved into kind of everything else that we go into, such as hardware, software. And last but not least, you will have access to this presentation. So if I go a little quickly, please bear with me. We've got a lot to get through. Um, but you will have access to this presentation later. It's a Google slide. Uh, so feel free to use it, learn from it, all those great things. Um, and I think, you know, starting our conversation on, on why video, we have to talk about what are the benefits of using video for learners? And we know that using videos increases student engagement. But what the research also tells us is that using more sensory experience than just text alone, it allows for sticky learning. You know, those those little things that you've learned somehow that carry that you carry throughout your your learning journey. Right. Many of us have unfortunately studied for the test and then after the test, we've lost that. Well, research tells us that video helps ensure that retention is that much deeper. Also, we can use videos to resolve questions before they become questions. Right. Being able to explain something out loud, verbally go through that really helps kind of grapple any of those topics in a, in a more robust sense. And last but not least, we need to stop assuming, especially for those of us who are teaching in higher ed and primary and secondary, that our students are these digital natives that they know everything, they understand everything uh, tech-wise. The truth of the matter is we need to help them with their digital literacy, help them understand that videos are affecting them whether they believe it or not, uh, and they can either, they can also learn and be influenced by them. But I would be remiss if I didn't speak to the benefits of using videos to you as an educator. Uh, the first is that it takes you away from your synchronous time from just being a container of knowledge. You can put that information in using your own videos, videos from experts. Uh, it allows you to, 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 to use your synchronous time to work on relationships and connection making. Also, by using videos from other experts in the field in your courses, it helps you get more information kind of plugged into the course. Last but not least, I cannot tell you, well, not last but not least, but the last two points are, uh, it helps improve course management. Using videos helps me kind of figure out, oh, this is the topic that I wanna start off with and this is how I wanna build the scaffolding of my particular lesson. And last but not least, we all know, especially in online, that our students, the, the greatest complaint is they feel a lack of, of connection. Well, videos allows us to be more human. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to show an example of that humanness through a video uh, that my wife and I actually recorded for one of my online courses. You know, I'll explain the thing to them and to you. What? I'm a socialize at a distance. I'm living my best life, minding my business. Am I anti -social? So I know that video was really quick and we'll, I'll show you a little bit more of these videos as we, we go throughout, but there's some components of this video that my students pulled out for me and shared that were important to them throughout the semester. The first is that this was shot on my dining room table. That is my wife wearing a pterodactyl spelling shirt. Uh, and that moment, that was a candid shot. I told her, uh, let's do the thing about whatever. And her what was completely caught, like that was authentic. Um, but what, what this is doing here is I brought them into my house. And especially during COVID, one of the intro songs that I chose for these videos is a song all about being stuck in your house. Um, so I said, hey, look, I'm in this with you. This is my family's in this here, but come and get to know me. This is who I am. This is where I live. Let's learn together. And you know, the data also echoes, not only does video allow us to be more human, it's effective, right? It's what our learners want. We see research and advertising and marketing tell us that individuals are 75% more likely to watch a video than read text. In fact, especially for those adult learners, 
they are 21% more likely to act on an email when it includes a video. So think about corporate training here. Or if you're in K-12 or even higher ed, you need them to do something with that information, add a video with that. And last but not least, there was a huge study done uh, with four-year and two-year state colleges uh, that looked at the utilization of video for knowledge retention. And it found that students had an, at an increase of 83% comprehension for content reviewed weeks, weeks past uh, that particular module when video was involved for instruction. Now, some of you might be thinking, wait, 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 Michael, are you saying that we can replace all of my lectures with video? I can even get videos from other people. I don't even need to be there. These students said, right, they learned better. They preferred video over the instructor. Well, when these same students were asked where they felt the role of a teacher played in the entire learning process, resoundingly, they agreed with this one statement. They said teachers are very important to learning and development. Video does not replace you. It extends what you can do, and it helps your learners retain that knowledge. Michael, right. I want to throw in this comment really quick that came in from YouTube with Latoya. She says, we all need human connection. We cannot forget the importance of humanizing the learning experience. And that this is right on Latoya. It makes total sense. It goes right along with what Michael is sharing. So thanks for jumping in. Most definitely. Thank, yeah, I, I, I agree. In fact, we find that students learn better when they have a connection with their teacher, with their instructor. Um, and, you know, I want to jump into some some best practices right now. And and I think I'm only going to settle on one and it's the most important. Uh, and this comes from both being a faculty and a student. Keep your video short. All right. <laughs> Research suggests that video should be be between two and six minutes long. This was a large scale study done at MIT looking at over six point nine million video watching sessions. And they concluded that the highest point of retention, the highest point of engagement is for shorter videos anywhere between two to six minutes. And there are a myriad of different reasons why you want to keep your video short, right? Some of those benefits are short videos are easier to re-record. When you're creating a video at home, you don't have this huge team, you don't have a whole day, um, you know, cut out in a recording studio. A short re-recording a short video is much easier than doing a 50 minute lecture. Also, it helps you keep your content succinct and avoids cognitive overload. When you're throwing all of this information at a student, especially when it's the introductory information that they're gonna need the foundation to build the rest of their knowledge for, dumping a hour and a half lecture is not going to be received effectively by your learners. And last but not least, these smaller chunked videos, right? This chunking, it helps increase retention for students, right? They can consume it in small bites. A, a, a statement that um, I will never forget and that people cringe when I say, but you know, how do you eat an elephant? That, that age old saying, it's one bite at a time, little bites, and that's how we should be delivering our video content. All right, let's dump, jump into probably one of the biggest questions that many of you have. And you're like, well, Michael, how do I create incredible videos from home when I don't have thousand dollar camera or video camera. So let's talk about hardware. And I think the age old debate has been, should I be using my webcam on my laptop or should I use my cell phone? And the truth of the matter is there are benefits to using each. All right. Your webcam on your computer, it's integrated into your device already. You can upload that video really easy and then even upload it right into uh, the rich content editor in Canvas. It also, many of them have really great mics, especially um, newer versions of these computers. But I don't know if you all have noticed during the pandemic, it has been difficult to purchase webcams. And also it's difficult to have the best or the newest cutting age laptop for that type of, uh, for that type of, of, of interaction. And so what I suggest is using smartphones. Now on this list, I got pros and cons. I really had to stretch to find cons for your cell phone. But the truth of the matter is, if you have a cell phone that you've purchased within the last three years, that thing has an incredible mic and an incredible camera, at least on the backside. And I, I didn't want to say that you have to stick with just the smartphone. But here, check out this video that I recorded uh, again for my class uh, on my laptop. 
All right, Meg. I need you. No, I need you to look at the camera. Go. 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 I'm good. Okay. All oh, perfect. Perfect. And now, put a little jacket on you until Amanda comes back, and we're good. Okay. On the count of three. One, two. No, I need you to not need. What's going camera. on here? Hey, <laughs> babe. Uh, the, the, she just jumped on the, the you chair. You put my jacket on the dog. It's for education. I'm a socialize at a distance. I'm living my best life, minding my business. So again, what you'll see is in this video. I'm I'm bringing my puppy into the video, right? Uh, the quality, it's not the best, but it's still really good. And let me tell you, the resounding comments I got from my students again and again were, Professor, your dog is so cute. But you know what I knew by that statement? They watched that video. That video wasn't week one, that was a week four video. My students were connected to me. I made that connection with them. And I even brought it home and brought something in there that they were like, oh my gosh, I wanna look and see what else comes here. Um, and you know, I, I wanna make a statement about cell phones that I think some of us old heads know, um, right? Because we remember life before cell phones. It's more than a tiny computer that also makes calls. These are some of the best cameras we have available to date, right? Some of you, this is the best camera in your house. In fact, look at this next video. I recorded kind of the same video with my wife uh, for another section for the course with our dog. Let's look at the quality, both microphone and visual. Okay, you're gonna be my student correspondent for today. All right, what I need you to do is just look at the camera. All right, you have your own jacket. I've got my own jacket. It's gonna be good though, right there. Right there. Okay, we're gonna get. We're gonna get. What's going we're, on here? Hey, um, uh, nothing, babe. Uh, she just jumped on the chair. Is that my jacket? Well, you know, she kind of like nestled her head into the. But it's it, white, like stains. It's. She's very. She's very clean though. I'm a socialize at a distance. I'm living my best life. My name. Yeah, and and I saw someone uh mention in the chat. Uh, you know, adding humor is important, right? Adding humor is 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 helpful. And yeah, it is, right? When you want to make that human connection, I want them to know, hey, look, I'm a real person. But what I want to point out in this video is the image quality is much higher than that webcam on my on my um, laptop was. And also you heard my sound really, really well. I don't know if you remember the first video, my wife's voice kind of sounded off in the distance and you couldn't really gain it that bad. But all of this was recorded right off a smartphone camera. So I wanna talk more specifically about some tips when you're using your smartphone to record incredible videos. And the first is you wanna record using your cell phone's rear camera, right? This is the highest quality uh, image and video you're going to get. I would always suggest buy a stand. Now I want you to know I have recorded videos without a stand. I would prop my cell phone up on a textbook and have a little mirror behind it and use that to kind of see what I was doing. So you don't need a stand, but it makes life so much easier. Um, I like the mirror behind the phone so that you can review your video while you're doing it, right? Maybe you wanna check the lighting. Uh, maybe you're not centered. So I put a little mirror right behind uh, my cell phone so that I can see it while I'm doing my recording. Um, always make sure your flash isn't on. That artificial light is very harsh on a lot of skin tones. And what I suggest is start recording before you get centered and, and you go. Uh, those moments in between and cutting that, it allows that video to be a little bit more authentic. Something else I wanna talk about when it comes to using your smartphone and audio is really try to use your a, a headset if you can. And what I suggest for these are either use your earbuds. I know many of us are familiar with it. Mark's doing a great job uh, using them right now. Um, also, if you, you, know, you have a, an Android um, or an aux, uh, adapter, you can still use that and hide the microphone. Really the best tool for these are those old school Bluetooth uh, headsets. They do a really good job at isolating your voice and keeping external sounds out. In fact, I'm gonna show a video of my wife using both the smartphone microphone and then with a headset and you'll see the difference. Um, something I also want to suggest is don't get too close to the microphone, it, it messes up uh, what your sound quality would be, and also don't be too far away. Let's check out the difference in audio when just using your smartphone. I do want to warn you all, she had just watched Hamilton, 
She's a little aggressive on this because I feel like she feels too passionate about audio and videos, but bear with me. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We fought for these ideals. We shouldn't settle for less. And neither should you with your audio. This is with only my cell phone. All right, so pretty great audio just using the microphone on her uh, on her her smartphone now we'll check the video when she plugs in her headset oh am i talking too loud sometimes i get over excited i don't want to throw away my shot by plugging in my headphones to my cell phone attach a binder clip with the speaker onto your shirt so you can be heard more clearly Right, and that's a really fun hack when you wanna make sure there's some noise around you, maybe you've got a dog and some kids in the other room, get the microphone, clip it on the inside of your shirt. It helps isolate the sound uh, so that even by using your smartphone, you get some high quality audio. Now that we've talked about audio, the most important thing for recording your videos is lighting, everyone. It's lighting. Uh, and one of the things that I wanna say is I'm doing a horrible example right now. I have my lighting behind me. I could not move my office around. I did put in a request to do so. IT manager laughed at me a little bit, but you know we'll get over that. Um, but one of the suggestions, the first suggestion that you should always do when you're recording is have the light source, not behind you, but in front of you, facing you. Also, when you can record in natural lighting, it's better um, for your skin, it's better for details. Um, do not use the flash on your phone. We talked about that previously. And I really wanna suggest, you know, purchase a stand, they're on, on Amazon, they're not too expensive or, or wherever you'd like to buy them. Uh, and they come with a ring light. So that'll really help with not that much harsh lighting. Um, you wanna avoid wearing all white or all black. This speaks to every skin tone. I, as you can see, I wore a white shirt right now and then broke it with a dark jacket. This helps the transition between this is my face and this is my body. If I was just wearing dark clothes, I'd be a floating head or just bright clothes. Sometimes, uh, depending on, on the lighting, it, it, it makes it, it actually makes your video look uh, much worse. And, you know, people ask me all the time, like, what should I wear when I'm doing these videos? You know, I, I'm a, a huge fan for patterns. If you know me, I love floral patterns, floral prints. Um, but what I would suggest is if you're, when you're doing your videos, go with solid colors. Um, those are definitely the best uh, to work with. And here, uh, we recorded a video showing the transition from poor lighting to great lighting. Check this out. This video is an example of some awful light. This light behind me, though it's a beautiful day outside, is not going to be the best for my video. You may be in your living room or in your dining room. Move around your room like Michael is now to find that best fit lighting. Now, with the lighting in front of me, I'm able to become more in focus with the camera and you can see the clear details of my shirt. Right, so, you know, I, I think what was important there is you saw we were in a room with a lot of windows and when she had the windows behind her, you could not make out even the words on her shirt. And, you know, I think what helps us out here too is it doesn't matter your skin tone. You want lighting face, you want to be facing the light and not have it behind you like I do right now. You have no idea the setup that I've had to do in here to make sure that you all can see me. Um, so lighting is important. Please work on that. Start with natural light. And if you can, have the light source facing you, not behind you. Let's talk about some other little uh, processes that will make your recording that much more effective. Uh, the first is you want to have your camera right at, at least an arm's length away. If you can stand for your recordings, this allows us to be a little bit more engaging, a little bit more natural. If you're from Miami, when you speak, you use your hands a lot. Uh, so standing gives you the ability to do that and use body language. Just because we're teaching online doesn't mean that we can't teach our students those fundamentals, those important aspects of human connection and communication. Uh, so again, you want to have your camera at least arm's length away. You want to sit up straight. My tip is I actually sit at the edge of the chair when I'm doing Zoom calls or presentations. So that kind of forces me to sit up straight. And you never, 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 never want to record from chin up. What I always suggest is elevate the webcam so it's at eye level. 
So it looks like you're looking and talking to someone like you would naturally. All right, so arm's length, eye level, all right, at height. Uh, and if you can, stand. Uh, and if you can avoid, please do not go from the chin up. If need be, you can always, you know, move your, your webcam down a little bit more. Um, and I want to bring some really technical terms. I, I think our multimedia manager here, Diego, he, he taught me all about this. Um, you want to do something called framing, right? You've been in web in, in Zoom calls with people where they're all up on the camera and like you only see like part of it or they're you're moving around trying to, to get there. Uh, framing is you being in the middle. So right, that focus is really on you. You really wanna minimize the space above your head. You don't want it too high, just enough where you're in the middle of that shot. All right, next let's talk about backgrounds. OK, um, I think many of us, when we're thinking about creating an incredible video, we're like, I need to find a beautiful place. It looks like a secret garden in my house. We all don't have this wonderful corner like Mark does in, you know, in his setup with like the, the plants all set up. Look, what you want is a background that doesn't have too much going on and that doesn't reflect too much light. I find it really valuable to use natural backgrounds as frequently as I can. I want to seem approachable. I want to seem real. I want to make an authentic connection. And doing so in a place in your home that means something to you or that is, you know, relatable to your students is a great way to do that. Um, try not to use motion backgrounds if you can. We all know what eyes tend to do when things are moving and, and going around. Uh, you want to stay away from standing on the wall. You want to step kind of forward so there's some depth. Uh, and then, of course, you know, Try to stay away from too bright colors or loud ones. Uh, that makes the viewing a little less um, optimal. Uh, and then I want to talk about strategic backgrounds too, right? So this is if you're recording a video, uh, just kind of informational or lecturing. You might also want to use, especially if you're using Zoom um, or some other platform, strategic backgrounds, right? Using a whiteboard as a background or putting an image about something that you're talking about as your background. So as you lecture, you can point to different parts of it. Uh, that's totally, totally something you can do. Again, I would really, really suggest avoid staying away from motion backgrounds. And again, bright colors or any loud backgrounds. All right. Um, and then, you know, just I want to say with your backgrounds, make them personal. Right. So here we we made a background. This is our mascot. His name is Rory at FIU. Um, you know, use your background strategically. Sometimes I use them as a part of my lesson to say, all right, depending on this color will be this group, right? To make sure that my students are engaged and they're, they're paying attention and there's some gamif gamification components in it. I'm sorry, game-based learning um, strategies used there. Gamification and game-based learning are not the same. Uh, shout outs to Lisa, uh, our, our in-house uh, learning science expert. Okay, so we've hit hardware. All right, and I, I know I'm running out of time. I gotta, I wanna make sure I, I get these, these primary points here so I can address any questions or you know give you all some time to, to let this sink in. Let's talk about software. Now, I wanna be honest with all of you. I know, Mark, we started our friendship really well. It may end at this moment. Um, people don't know this about me, but I am not an Apple person. I am PC, you see, there, there's a the face. I, I, it was gonna happen, it, it was gonna happen. Um, I, 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 we're not going to get into this right now. Um, but with that in mind, I made sure that I included softwares here that work in all operating, um, yeah, in all operating softwares, um, operating systems, whether you're using an iPhone, whether you're using an Android phone, whether you're using a windows computer or a Mac. All right. So the first product that I want to talk about for software is one that we know almost to ad nauseum, and that's Microsoft PowerPoint. But many of us don't know that you can actually use PowerPoint to create videos. You can export your presentation as an MP4, and this really helps for a myriad of reasons. One, you can upload it to YouTube and get it closed captioned and then embed that using the rich content editor in Canvas. Um, it is a really, really powerful tool that you have access to and your students have access to probably for free well, tuition paid for it. Um, the next tool that I wanna talk about is Zoom. 
we're all living on Zoom, right? Let, let's be honest. Um, Zoom can be used to create recordings, tutorials, especially it works the best for screen recordings. If you're showing students how to navigate components in your course or maybe submit an assignment, I use my Zoom walkthrough tutorials to show my students how to submit papers through Turnitin using the LTI and assignments feature in, excuse me, in Canvas or where they can find their rubrics in Canvas so they can review the expectations for their assignments that I want them uh, to use and that I'm going to use for grading. This next one's going to be a little controversial, okay? But I want you all to know I'm a millennial, so this is kind of like my wheelhouse, TikTok. And I have to be honest with you all. Students love these videos. They're short, but this edit, this software gives you some really robust editing options. So you can really make your videos a little bit more engaging. You can keep them succinct. It is limited, right? It only goes up to about 60 seconds and it only shoots in portrait mode, um, but it is a really great way to connect to your learners in a way that they already understand and one that you can use on any device. Uh, the next software I wanna show, this is probably one of the best video editing software if you're using a Android device that, or an, you're using an Android device that's not a Google Pixel or not a um, Samsung Galaxy in that family. Uh, those two lines of Android actually have really great video editing software native within their, their, um, their camera features. But if you're not using one of those, InShot is a really good so video editing software that you can use directly off your phone. So you can record yourself, edit it on your phone, and then upload it uh, and use it elsewhere later. Um, last but not least, you Apple people are gonna rejoice because one of the most incredible video editing softwares is iMovie. Um, and if you don't know this feature about iMovie, they have these really great uh, stock trailers that you can, movie trailers. I know I've seen faculty use them for talking about different assignments, uh, talking about things to look forward to in their course. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal software that comes built into your iPhone. You may have to purchase it or uh, work on downloading it for your iPad Pro or your Mac computer. Uh, and don't worry, you Windows users, we have a software as well on Windows devices. It's called Windows Photos. Uh, it is not as robust as iMovie is, but I created that video that you all saw about the lighting changing. I edited, I put text there, added audio. You can do all those things using Windows Photos on your PC. Um, the last software I wanna share with you is if you've got the funds, if you wanna spend money, I think the best video editing software for educational videos, for learning videos, has to be hands down Camtasia. This tool is incredible. You can you can do so much zoom ins and 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 all these all these different types of features using Camtasia. Uh, it's one hundred sixty nine dollars for an education uh, an educator license, um, and you can use this both on a PC and a Mac. Uh, I'm not getting any money from pushing any of these softwares. I just want to suggest to you all what I've used most successfully and best actually all of my videos in my course, I take through Camtasia and edit and add uh, features to. Um, so, you know, to just kind of wrap everything up here, look, you can create incredible videos from home if you follow those short steps, but you need to ask yourself before you create a video, do you need to create a video for this particular item, right? And so, you know, what I used to outline, when are the best times that you need to use videos? These are if you need to model behavior and interpersonal skill. If you need to demonstrate a how-to or, or how to not do a specific task. If you want to emphasize an important point, we have faculty who are teaching history who want to really relay the message of how important something might be. And so they upload a video so they can, they can transpose that, that passion about that interaction to their learners. And also when you need more emotional appeal, um, than just photos or text can deliver. I think fundamentally, everyone, you just want to remember to always start with your objectives as you attempt, the, the, the objective you're attempting to achieve, uh, and then figure out what is the best medium to deploy that. Now, when you get this presentation, I want you to know I have given you links to all of these softwares, all of these tools that I have suggested how to create videos to them. So if you were like, Michael, but you didn't show me how to do that, don't worry about it. 
These links right here, they will give you those resources. You will have this here to help you. And if that doesn't work, you can always contact me right through email at emmalendi at fiu.edu through LinkedIn. There's not a lot of Michaels, as many of you thought my name might have been when you first saw it. So I am Michael is my unique LinkedIn URL. And my handle for Twitter is not your average Mike. I forgot to upload the little Twitter handle right there. Uh, but that's all I have for you all. Thank you so much uh, for spending your time with me. I hope that you all will create incredible videos from home uh, and that you will connect much more effectively and much more humanly with your students, everyone. Take care. Michael, you are getting all kinds of props here from people. Um, people love this presentation. Make sure you click on that link. I just dropped it uh, multiple times in the comments. Click on it, download it, use it. Um, such a helpful presentation. As you can imagine, I've got Michael now. He's not, he's not going anywhere. He's going to be back. Whether he wants to or not, He's 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 been brought into the fold, if you will, into the Canvas family fold, and he's not going anywhere. You'll see him back here again very soon. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, family. We will see you tomorrow morning, 1030 a.m. Mountain. We have our good friend Jonathan Yoder and others who are going to be talking about using Canvas and LTIs together. So we'll see you at 1030 a.m. Thanks, everybody. Talk soon.